know you're about to, you're, you're jumping in here, Tony. I just want to, I pick, just. But picks and pans, okay? Now, picks and pans, that's it. We usually come up with some recommendations, okay. but go ahead, Tony. Well, go well ahead. my one comment was, uh, back to the flavor, uh, the current cap-and-trade policy relative to ice cream would be Rocky Road. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's it's bumpy. We've yeah, and as all, we all know, it's uh, and in terms of picks and pans, cap and trade is past current, past the House of Representatives. It's it seem, looks like it's not going to go anywhere, but that's having an impact on businesses. I mean, for example, Exxon, some of the energy stocks. And Tony, you've been t you've been our our listeners, our viewers have been making right. a ton of money if they've been following your recommendations. Are you still? But if they followed our la from our last podcast, they lost a little money since then because you're right. you're still long on energy. I, I still stocks. think that energy, uh, global energy demand is rising faster than global energy capacity. So I back to Karen's right. Point. So I do right. believe in the long term that energy is really a bullish market. So buy if you've got if you got this Exxon Mobil stock, hold on to it. It's not a right. time to be bailing out now. Uh, yes, I, I just be careful about being into energy uh, firms that are too fossil based or too niche based and, and universal or, or, or listed in one particular niche. Back to maybe Karen's point about diversification. Sure. Right. Diversify, you want an energy companies that are diversified. And Karen. you know what, the, the era of big oil companies is really over. I mm -hmm. mean big oil is now big oil, big gas, big algae, big everything. <laughs> uh, they're right, really right. diversifying their own portfolios because they too are looking uh, long term. These are long term investments they're making and so they want to have a diversified stream of revenue as well. So. Now I we, think that they're a very good player. Now, we, now you probably, uh, given your position, you probably don't want to make any recommendations about investment strategies in energy, non-energy, or that. Is that? Am no, I, but I, I think it's. I think what you said is exactly right. I mean, they are going. Energy is going to be with us forever. It's going to take many different shapes and forms. So companies are looking long term. They're positioning themselves to survive over the long term. So they're a very good investment. Yeah. Well, I'm a hold on energy right now, meaning if you got it, don't sell it. If you don't have it, I'm not saying buy it. I think the prices could come down. But I agree, long term buying energy, it's, the demand is out there. But we need the right policy environment right. Yes. for these, for these companies to be able to invest and be profitable. And right now, we don't have it. We don't. So and we gotta, and you're we saying this up and down that. policy that are like, well, today it's the this, tomorrow it's that, uh, somebody wins the Massachusetts election. What about uh, the Illinois elections? I mean, all of a sudden we our policies change with elections, which mm -hmm. is what right. we want. But uh, I don't think, sometimes we're not making good energy policy decisions based upon good energy and economic thought. Mm -hmm. We're making them on other political, based upon other political reasons. Now, you, and I'm going to repeat myself for viewers who have seen our podcast before, but I'm, I'm long on farm, farm products. And of course, cap and trade is important to farmers. Absolutely. And it could be very damaging, could be beneficial, but right now it's, it's questionable. But I'm still long, long term though, again. I'm taking the position of uh, farm, farm uh, stocks far, such as Don Deere, Monsanto, long term, although I'd like to see if they come down a bit, I would love, want them to see them come down a bit more before I bought, but I'm long on those as you are on energy. Now, but they're big consumers of energy too. Oh, absolutely. So you want to get the energy equation right so that actually your long term play on agriculture yes. bears out as well. Absolutely. So they're interrelated. Yes, yes. Now as you're talking about that though, Ernie, you know, the recent strength in the U.S. dollars pushed commodity prices down. So how, how do you reconcile that right, with Tony, the, come on, <laughs> Tony, Tony, you're bringing up, you, you, you know, I've been, I've been, I've been bull, uh, bearish on the dollar for a long time. I'm still bearish. It's up for, this is, uh, don't be, uh, don't be taking those dollars and thinking you can hold them and make some money. It's the dollar, I think, is still headed downward. That's going to be good for energy. It's going to be good for farming. And I still, I still think the dollar is is is, is going to be down. The trend. Who, who's it going to be bad for? Well, I mean, if you take the dollar, it's going to push up some of uh, oil consumers in, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Now, as Karen says, that's farmers. Now, that's a bit of contradiction. But I, I argue that farmers benefit more from a cheap dollar than it hurts them on the uh, on the uh, uh, side. on the side. But big 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 users of energy, of course, are going to be hurt by a cheap dollar. Uh, that's that's and also of course you're in talking about inflation. That's inflationary, so it means interest rates are going to have to head higher, but probably not heading higher fast enough. So if you got to borrow, borrow now. Don't wait around, folks. If you if you can get the credit, get it. You know. But as I to repeat my joke from last time, you know, with the, we do a bank survey. Well, 
as my renegade uncle has said, you know, I, I don't have a credit problem. The people I owe money to have a credit problem. <laughs> and I can tell Karen's already heard that joke. She yes. turned away. <laughs> You'd heard that one. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. And, and, uh, to, uh, but anyway, uh, it's, but other recommend, but interest rates are going to hit higher. And, and we're talking about a housing sector that's already fragile. And these, this is not going to help. And it's, it's going to hurt in terms of, of course, uh, it's going to help some of the asset holders, depends on the assets you hold, uh, but uh, it, it'll help, uh, help some of the asset holders, but it'll hurt housing. So I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about what it'll do. The president has just released his new uh, budget proposal, oh, yeah. and uh, some $1.68 yeah. trillion dollar deficit. What's that going to do to interest rates uh, in this country and globally? Oh, it's it's not good. They're going to be going up. But it, but it, but to quote uh, Saint uh, Saint Augustine, you know, uh, what is it? Lord, uh, make me chase, but just not yet. <laughs> in other words, the president's saying, let's freeze, but let's wait a while. You know, in other words, Americans want it. All, they don't want to. What they want to? Let's put it off. And but I think American business right now is scared to death of this big budget blowout. I mean, we have a deficit like we've never seen mm, before, sure. and yet the people that are lending us money to, to 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 let us meet our goals. I mean, China's looking at us. What are we doing? Yeah, I know. We're, We're spending. I mean, thirteen point six percent is going to is a percentage of the economy as our but, deficit. And that, that that's brings really us, scary. Okay, now 